Hey everyone and welcome! I'm the Geek Apprentice, one of the hosts for Game Over Jesse, and today we are going to be covering everything we know about Ocarina of Time HD, Majora's Mask HD, and Ur Zelda. And there is actually a lot of information out there that no one seems to be talking about. Everything in this video comes directly from Nintendo or developers who have worked on Zelda games in the past. None of this comes from rumors, speculation, or clickbait nonsense. Every piece of information we use during this video, we will show on screen to prove everything we are saying. We have been asked a lot about these three games lately. When will Ocarina of Time HD release? Is it even being worked on? Which developer is working on it? What changes will it have? The truth is, Nintendo hasn't revealed every Zelda game they are working on by name. However, they have stated that they are working on different unannounced Zelda games. In fact, they literally put together an entirely new team to begin working on a new Zelda project. We also have other development teams who worked on Zelda remakes confirm that they are working on unannounced remakes and have been for years. They have even teased fans by hinting toward working on something Zelda related. So let's take a look at all of the factual information we have from interviews and official announcements to answer your questions. We need to look at this in three ways and correct some misinformation that is out there especially about Ura Zelda and Nintendo's development teams. 1. Nintendo has at all times at least 4 or 5 teams working on different Zelda games. Some people believe Nintendo only puts out a single Zelda game every 5 or 6 years, and that's honestly just wrong. They have a team of their own dedicated to handheld Zelda games, and a team dedicated to big Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword type games. They have teams such as Tantalus who only work on remakes and ports, who were also behind Twilight Princess HD, Grezzo, who was responsible for Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D, as well as other 3DS games. They now seem to be having Monolith Soft, which they purchased a while back, working on a new Zelda project. This brings in yet another new team to the Zelda mix. Though they aren't exactly new to working on Zelda, they are actually responsible for a lot of work in Nintendo games like Splatoon and other major Nintendo games going all the way back to Skyward Sword on the Wii. They also allowed a huge portion of their team to work on Breath of the Wild. As a thank you, Nintendo added a free DLC quest and costumes to Breath of the Wild to help promote Monolith Soft's Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They have teams like Brace Yourself, Tecmo, and others who have been responsible for spin-off games. 2. They have never released two remakes in the same year. This means it's not likely to be this year since we already have Link's Awakening releasing. However, without a big mainline Zelda game releasing, they could break the pattern by filling that spot with a second remake. However, we already have a spin-off and a remake coming this year. We have seen two or three games release within a year of each other before though, so potentially the soonest would be next year. But this makes us wonder if they would rather go with Skyward Sword HD, which hasn't received any sort of HD remake despite being originally shown off in HD. We also have that tease from Aonuma, however, they have denied working on Skyward Sword HD, which you can't really take seriously, just like Miyamoto saying they wouldn't be releasing a 3DS XL because the original model was already perfect, then Nintendo releasing about, you know, five other models. Aonuma and Miyamoto both telling us multiple times that they were not working on Majora's Mask 3D, then announcing its release date a few months later and revealing they had been working on it since the release of Ocarina of Time 3D. While we could count them as actual lies, it's more so that they legally can't say if they are working on it or not until its official reveal because of NDAs and such, plus Nintendo puts millions of dollars into marketing teams to plan out the exact day and time to reveal their games. And 3. Who would be developing or porting these HD remakes? Tantalus and Grezzo are main choices for working on it since they have a history with Zelda remakes and ports. Tantalus actually announced years ago that they were working on several unannounced Switch ports and remakes. None of those games have been announced yet, so whatever they are working on, they have been working on several unannounced Switch games for years most likely to be revealed at E3 or another Nintendo Direct as their games rarely take this long to complete. What would take this long though? Probably a game that they would absolutely hate to mess up and would want to take the time to get it 100% perfect. A game as massive and universally loved as Ocarina of Time. This brings up some other remakes and ports they would be working on as well. What could the others be? We would honestly say they would most likely be bringing over their Wii U game, Twilight Princess HD, to the Switch. Possibly even Wind Waker HD. 
Twilight Princess HD. That one is already running on the Nvidia Shield, which is basically the same hardware as a Nintendo Switch. So it's honestly a mystery why they haven't brought it to the Switch officially. And Skyward Sword? It could also possibly take this long to retool the motion control to work with traditional controls, as it might take a bit more than mapping the motion controls to a normal controller, like you can do on a Dolphin emulator with a 360 controller. They would probably want to change the way some enemies are fought, as the entire game is made specifically for motion controls. Although, it is possible to beat the game using a normal Xbox 360 controller. We have Grezzo the original developers of Ocarina of Time 3D. No one would know more about the ins and outs of its engine, its bugs, glitches, problem areas, how to completely change it into a new engine, or what it can do and what it can't do than them. They have had a lot of success with Zelda remakes, even making money to fund their own original series and getting the okay from Nintendo to take on other remakes, such as Luigi's Mansion for the 3DS, which they even completely changed the engine of, lighting, shadows, basically almost creating an entirely new game and even added multiplayer to it. We've seen how quickly games can be ported from the Wii U to the Switch, from the 3DS to the Switch, and even from the Wii U to the 3DS, which it would take a lot of work to get a game running on something as powerful as the Wii U to run on something like the 3DS. Yet we have seen this with games like Hyrule Warriors, Smash Bros, Mario Maker, and Yoshi. We've even seen Nintendo Switch games like Fire Emblem Warriors released simultaneously for the 3DS. So if Nintendo partners can have such success getting Switch or Wii U games ported to the 3DS, we would imagine it would be a million times easier getting a 3DS game to port to the Switch. If you run Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask on an emulator in HD or even 4K, which we have a comparison of on our channel, it looks amazing. The only thing about that that could be considered bad would be the textures. They could simply remap the touchscreen to work with traditional controls on the Switch and redo the textures to make them amazing ports. If they really wanted to impress fans, they could actually take advantage of the Switch's power, giving us higher polygon models, textures, better lighting, basically remaking it from the ground up to take full advantage of everything the Switch offers, and then add amiibo support like Nintendo originally wanted to do with Majora's Mask 3D, and just as they did do with Twilight Princess HD. However, Aonuma stated he didn't know how to make the Skull Kid amiibo work with the game, but they liked it so much they turned it into a statue instead of an amiibo. We would even like to see a new dungeon of some sort like in Twilight Princess HD. Actually, if they do that, we might would actually pass the $60 price tag and pay $200 or more if they finally released what Zelda 64 or Zelda Ura was. And yes, they are completely different things. Zelda 64 or the beta of Ocarina of Time had Link beginning the game as an adult and eventually traveling to the past with all of the extra areas, side quests, and dungeons added in. Ura Zelda was retooled to have most of the game on the Ocarina of Time cartridge with some extra stuff retooled to work as an expansion. Eventually, the extra ideas for puzzles, dungeons, and stuff were put to use in the Master Quest of Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and ideas have gone on to be unused for almost 20 years to end up in Breath of the Wild, which Aonuma himself actually admitted on its release. That comment from Miyamoto about Uru Zelda being Master Quest was sort of a half-lie. Similar to the comments we covered earlier from him saying the 3DS XL wouldn't release and Majora's Mask 3D wasn't being worked on, then both being officially announced just a month or so later. Finally, we have Monolith Soft. They announced publicly they were hiring exclusively for a new Zelda project. Shortly after, they announced that they had put together a brand new team, which was likely made up of employees who helped on Breath of the Wild as well as the new employees hired specifically for their announced Zelda project. Now, with all of the help they gave on Breath of the Wild, Skyward Sword, and other games, it's likely Nintendo would allow them to create their own Zelda game, perhaps another crossover like they have done with Mario a few years ago most notably with Mario plus Rabbids, Pokemon, and other games, including Zelda with Hyrule Warriors. So how would a Zelda cross Xenoblade gameplay? Maybe that's just wishful thinking from Xenoblade fans, though. For most, Smash Bros. is more than enough for crossovers. Some think they would be working on more DLC for Breath of the Wild, due to them working on Breath of the Wild and its DLC. Yes, Aonuma has said that the game was done and they moved on. However, development on Breath of the Wild has continued with minor updates and most notably the free DLC adding VR mode. So they haven't completely moved on. We also have the president of Nintendo stating new paid DLC would be coming to older popular titles. So far, we've gotten free DLC, but Breath of the Wild won game of the year, so it can easily be called their biggest title. Then shortly after his announcement, a team 
team that worked on Breath of the Wild as well as Breath of the Wild DLC just happens to be hiring staff and creates an entirely new team specifically to work on another Zelda project? So could that project be more DLC? It would make sense if Nintendo decided their next big game will take longer than expected, similar to what they did when Breath of the Wild was delayed by releasing Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD to hold fans over. Alternatively, they could be working on a remake themselves. The team isn't that big, so it would make more sense for them to be working on something smaller, such as DLC or a remake. And we could definitely see Nintendo having enough faith in them to allow them to work on the highly anticipated Ocarina of Time HD. So this is basically all the info we have currently on those games. Perhaps we will get more at E3 or sometime later in the future. If Tantalus ends up announcing games in the near future, then it makes us then it makes it more likely that Grezzo would be the one working on it or vice versa. Also, if we have Skyward Sword or Twilight Princess HD or even entirely new Zelda game announced for 2020, they might lower the chances of Ocarina of Time HD releasing that year. Because again, Nintendo's history with Zelda remakes is that they never release more than one a year, especially if a new game, especially if a new game is due to release that year. However, Twilight Princess HD was originally supposed to release the same year as Breath of the Wild, before it was delayed. If you have any questions, please let us know and we will give answers to all of them on our podcast, The Hylian Gamescast. Hey everyone, it's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more.